It's time to rock and roll! All right, hello everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Waffle Press Interviews. We do our hangout episodes, uh, but we're we're getting a lot of uh, lucky guest spots to, to interview some really wonderful people. So today we really want to welcome director Ariel Vida and star Jane uh, Blader for uh, Trim Season in upcoming horror surreal feature film that, um, well, we have a lot of thoughts on it, but yeah. <laughs> uh, we just want to ask how you two are doing today. We're great. And my name's Jane Badler. Badler. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Although I don't that. mind Blader. That might start <laughs> a little better. Uh, it's mm-hmm. on me. I misread the notes, but um, yeah, Blader, know, maybe okay. that could be your nickname. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I wish I could read it if the cat wasn't on my lap, but I've got Mona's knife like right across the room right now. That's a very like. <laughs> <laughs> very cool. But yeah, uh, yeah. Me, it's been a great morning. Um, mm. Just, yeah, that it only, you know, 72 hours ago when besides the direct team really had seen it and to suddenly hear that it you know hopefully is read is like you know just biggest biggest uh you know uh dopamine you know like, yeah, exactly so. yeah we've, we've been getting such great responses so we're very very happy yeah it's um it goes some places uh it's pretty violent it's pretty surreal like i mentioned um a very strange concept uh but we want to ask first like how was the overlook festival because uh, that's a pretty big genre thing you guys got into what was that like it's great yeah i'd actually been hearing from from early it's it's like earliest years i had art directed a short film called babysitter murders with uh with ryan spindell and justin ross and mm. i'd seen but I'd heard about the films that had played and that was back when I was um, at the Stanley Hotel even. And as it went to different cities and obviously the you know pandemic making things virtual, um, I had I had so hoped even just as a as a fan to go at some point. Um, I had only been to New Orleans to shot a film called Symphonic there. Um, and I, I love that city. So uh, yeah. I Doug reached out about inviting us um, for the world premiere of all of all screenings. It's like there's almost you know not a better like audience to feel you know to feel safe sitting in the yeah. hearing our <laughs> yeah yeah I know it's really cool that uh you know everything's back like in person and everything with like yeah, it's you know great. That's, yeah um, question for Ariel um it's funny uh saw you at the uh, panel for something in the dirt for Beyond Fest uh, mm. I believe you. Um, the production designer for that, but um, just kind of going off of that, what was the uh, most like useful aspect of like production design that helped you like in the world of directing or just specifically this movie? I'm just curious. I mean, I think that I've always been, even before I knew what that job was, just falling in love with my favorite movies, like, you know, Lord of the Rings and everything that Guillermo del Toro does. Like I always, I actually del Toro had had this quote about um, these visuals not being, he didn't like eye candy. It was like, mm-hmm. it was like it's eye protein. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> this of, you know, creating this world that's obviously um, moment has this you know, theatrical a uh, uh, presentation you know for for the trimmers when they come in and trying to find like that that balance so we wanted the stakes to feel grounded we weren't trying to make just something so um you know too much of a fairy tale that you're not feeling like this is you know just off center of what happens to you know the, these people who go missing and you know in real life and treating it with that like reverence of, of the you know this mountain and the you know the history of this mountain and and what ways could feel very you know not just the art for art's sake but the specifics of well we have this red weed how can we start infusing that you know in in the production design the the first when i was given the script newspapers came off the window and they went back on and i've worked with the same uh, my production designer katie simon and my graphic designer kim barons for like 10 years and mm-hmm. almost, almost right away i went to the graphic designer and i was like oh well those new newspapers they put up should have like more red print you know let's like uh, try to start seeding this throughout and when we start flashing to these moments even in the hallucinogenic nightmares it all feels like you're earning this mm-hmm. call that red tent so yeah i love i love production design but i always am looking for like you know how can you earn those larger than life elements in the in the story so Mm -hmm. i'm grateful if that came across (laughs) yeah no definitely very cool yeah yeah and uh your production design is like really uh like i'm glad gene had this question like when we're prepping for this because it it was really striking uh Mm -hmm. i also want to ask um about 
the look of the film um because it's it's so like it's it's very pretty but it's not again like you mentioned like not just art for art's sake it's not pretty for pretty sake like it really adds this texture and aesthetic to it and the lighting and um your your lens choices uh how did that come what was what was like to prep for that was that something like a the look you had in mind going into it was there like a film emulation thing going on like what went into that and then i'll I want to let it to, to oh. Jane. After, but no, yeah. no, no. Of I want to hear course. that too. I'm fascinated by that. That is such a good question. So alongside uh, Katie Simon, the production designer, uh, Luca Bazzelli, our cinematographer, is like so, so lucky uh, that that he worked with us on this. And when I first started speaking to him, mm-hmm. he had just in the height of the pandemic gone on a long camping trip in Northern California and mm-hmm. had all these issues of like the woods and the fog. And I think early on when Katie and I actually took our own little solo trip to Humboldt County and we're, we're looking at these farms, obviously it's, it's legalized now in a way that it wasn't in the actual um, story of the film, but we were running into so many different people with all of these actually like beautiful stories of, of the mountain and, and former trim girls who then had their own farms and just like picturesque, um, like their children running around the, the, the crops with like a mm. puppy you know, like a puppy and like a chicken. And so many people were like saying like, oh, I hope, you know, we know that there's, you know, obviously been, you know, these true crime shows, but that they actually felt this beautiful, like peace um, on, on the mountain and like what the beauty of this area was. And even seeing, you know, the, the, the true crime, you know, documentary, you know, moments mm-hmm. about when, when people came to Northern California, when, you know, people coming back from Vietnam just wanted to live off the land. So I really wanted to find that balance of, okay, there's something wrong, you know, Mona, there has been something that has corrupted this mountain, but how can we also have that like picturesque, you know, that it was something that was a paradise and it became, you know, corroded and pervaded. So we needed to have those, you know, again, without just trying to show off a wide angle lens, Mm that's what you feel when you're up there there's this awe of the, the the trees and so we have these moments when you know I wanted to have like Emma and um and Malcolm have these point of view moments where you're like seeing these like really you know again gorgeous scenes Emma's coming from like the crazy traffic and the the, the job loss and everything in LA and there's actually a moment of like breath and like release and you feel like oh well maybe she is meant to be here there's something that like she needed here that she didn't have you know in in Los Angeles mm-hmm. Then you're, then you can like tweak it a little bit, you know, we like Luca and I, when we were talking about, you know, even just, yeah, the, the lenses and the exposure and how do we feel like this longing for a beautiful place, but just something about it has been darkened and dimmed and, and can, can Emma like mm. bring it back to something better. Mm. And then I, I of course had a question for Jane Badler. Uh, you have such, oh, in a really great way, a strange performance in this. There's so much like, history embedded into this character there's a, a real sense of like a, a culture we'll say um how did you go about finding that within mm. the performance like mm. did you have any touchstones in real life or other horror films mm. yeah I sort of um I did watch quite a few films I mean a- Ariel recommended films to me before we started filming and I I watched a film and I and I got some inspiration, I have to say, from Tilda Swinton. Uh, she was in a couple of kind of weird films and I, I was watching her stillness and I definitely wanted to imbue that into my character, this incredible, because I'm not that still a person, I'm a kind of frantic person. So I had to get rid of all that and make this character very slow in the way that she thought, her thought process, everything was very deliberate with this character. And I also worked with um, a couple of coaches. Like I worked with one coach who we started to go into kind of mystic mysticism and women goddesses. And, and then I kind of worked with another coach and we then we really delved deep into the trauma of the character. So I really didn't leave any stones unturned for this character because it was really important to me that that is exactly what I did with it, that I did not do me, that I created a whole way of walking, a whole way of speaking, and a past, a very strong past, a very, a past full of pain and trauma and, uh, and an escape from that. And a character who obviously was using that for, uh, you know, for her own selfish means, 
but just like most people with addiction, sometimes they don't think of others in their quest for that one substance that will make them feel better. Yeah, no, that's really cool. Um, kind of going off the, uh, you know, working on set, is there any like a uh, favorite memory you guys both had just filming and everything? Maybe the moose and the porcupine. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> We were just talking to someone else this morning about, and I, I'm so happy the shot is in the movie because it was totally what I wanted. But then I also have that memory of when we see Mona walking into the trim cabin um, through the uh, through the drying stalks when Harriet has just pulled down the newspaper. And it's this, you know, a lot of like Mona, it's like her presence precedes her and we feel her coming. And um, so the Luca and I are behind the stocks. We've got Jane. We're getting this shot, and then we just hear the the AD saying that there's these this this moose and her her child outside, and they're like the entire crew like get in the cabin to get away from the moose. And I was like, ah, like we're rolling. Um, obviously, just don't you know, don't touch the moose. Um, oh, I think Jane might have. I'm oh. sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, we had wildlife uh, a porcupine that kept again. This was like rural Utah. And, we had gotten an announcement that was, please stop leaving your lunches on the steps in, in the trailers at base camp because the porcupine keeps coming and he's like mm -hmm. eating the, you know, we don't want him eating the tin foil, you know? And then he came all the way onto set. We're trying to shoot in the red tent and the porcupine wandered into the tent and we just have to wait. You know, we couldn't really escort him out. We had to wait for him to uh, leave on his own. And uh, <laughs> I'm sure Jane's coming back, but just- yeah. uh, uh, for as uh, as far as watching monitor uh the very last day of watching her um the scene was when she's controlling dusty and she's doing that dance and we had you know been talking to we had this great choreographer eldon in um in utah and we'd, we'd had those bits and pieces but to actually have the moment with you know with with the lighting with the the moonlit you know pine trees you know behind her um like all, all coming together to that dance and and we would just have you know luca would just roll on the entire like three minutes of her dancing and like that was one of the most um going into the editing room where i was like mm -hmm. i'm not gonna cut like every angle like I just it was captivating it was like you truly like felt like you were under her her spell because mm -hmm. every um yeah so that was that was was like the last day so you're like you know everything crazy has happened and to just like sit with that um you know just ethereal ethereal dance was just uh yeah that was that was really fun yeah it sounds like it yeah and I'm sorry I'm sure I was like she might just be hopping back on I know she's yeah no, no it's, it's, it's totally fine. Is there, um... we'll, we'll let her get to that question if, she, if she's back yeah. in time. Uh, we, we can just move on to another question for you, and then we'll bounce back uh, with her uh, if she's able to rejoin us. But are there any other like specific influences? You you mentioned uh, Guillermo del Toro, uh, obviously, which is like we're huge fans of, big fans of uh, the horror genre as a whole. Any specific uh, stuff like you drew from? In the making of this film because it's a pretty you know specific uh entity this film we'll say yeah i mean obviously i mean everything that he's done but they're like like just to the left i was gonna say my pan's labyrinth poster oh nice <laughs> if, you know uh you know and i feel like walking into the woods and you know just like how to make these natural you know uh, natural environments feel you know feel strange so definitely you know pan pan's labyrinth um always just like across you know across the board even if it doesn't seem like as you know as specific of a of, of a, a northern california weed folk thriller but like i've got like the fall and lord of the rings behind me and like tarsum and peter jackson it's like even just the time dilation like if the um uh Oh, sorry. If the uh, if the Nazgul were approaching, and you know, like what you're seeing, um, the the presence of evil. I mean, you even have in in Lord of the Rings, you have like you know the beautiful Shire, and you know what is corrupting it, and um, you know, and there, there's the obvious, uh, you know, Suspiria and Midsommar and, and and those. But it's it's funny when I when I bring up things like you know I'm 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 like nerding out about Tolkien, and people are like that's not what we thought. That, that's not exactly what you would say, but if you watch it a hundred times, it's it's in there. So I just was trying to, you know, to pull from, you know, things that resonated from like character and like experiential moments, like, you know, characters, you know, coming from, you know, places of, of, of innocence, but stress and anxiety, like Emma and just being thrust into, you know, something that's going to, you know, have them, you know, 
grow, you know, grow and change, but that the, in the beginning, they're completely in over their head. So all of my, my favorite action sci-fi things, it's like, didn't get to have a big, big car chase in trim season, you know, but that's yeah. always, you're, you're looking at even just the shot length, like discussions with the editor of, um, you know, we were even just like pulling, if they even had like, I don't know, spring breakers and just any sort of like how, like having any reference, um, I think helped find something that hopefully feels unique instead of just being like, here's our one, you know, North Star, we're going to just I cop everything off of this one hopefully I, I would always just be throwing out like a new uh I mean some of the documentaries about the actual you know industry and just feeling um and and sometimes feeling like which of these feel like they weren't true to the area that were almost like uh over indexing I'm like oh look it's it's so foggy it's so miserable up there and then when I went up there I was like pretty pretty gorgeous you know like you had like and trying to find that like that in between so that hopefully it would feel true and not feel like this just like larger than life witch story but you're like no this is just off center of what could actually happen up there yeah yeah no it really showed through the movie so definitely. thank you so much thank oh you. yeah of course um any uh future projects you could maybe talk about um or you know want to uh promote or anything yeah um, I mean, I'm excited for obviously trim season to continue to, uh, I think our next screening is um, the 13th, April 13th at Panic Fest and on into the summer. Uh, my first uh, like a short story that will be published is uh, Haunted Reels. There's a, a group of filmmakers. We've got uh, Robert Cargill and Benson Moorhead and um, uh, just honored to be part of part of that. I think there's 30 of us. So there's a short story in that coming out. Um, this this summer i know i know where the book the physical book is dropping but i don't think i'm allowed to say <laughs> but definitely this summer okay. um and it'll be online and that um is a is a weird western short story that i have the feature um been shopping around but i think there's i think there's a movie i'm doing before the weird western this year with um mm. uh with some of the trim season cast and and that's a that's a little smaller it's like two people one location but i made i made that location really ambitious and everyone was just like only you like why didn't you why didn't you pick your living room and i was like mm, it takes place on the water <laughs> yeah oh no you saw a movie on the water oh that's that I mean that's i'm sure it looks great if it's anything like this movie but it's just <laughs> you just hear the horror stories so i hope yeah. you're okay after that like, water oh world. my goodness and i was just like i mean i like mad max i want to put it on the water not water world but like <laughs> children of men meets meets andor and uh yeah that's my and, and and even more talking about the action would have even more uh the action i didn't get to do it in, in trim season mm -hmm. um that's yeah i want to be doing fury road some days <laughs> yeah no uh, you're you're saying it. all the right things for fans like fans like us and fans of this podcast so mm -hmm. uh thank you so much for your time uh thank thank you jane badler for her time um we wish her the best she wasn't able to rejoin us for this one uh, thank you to Prodigy, Prodigy PR for setting this up and uh, we wish you the best of luck on the rest of your endeavors and yeah. everything you just mentioned uh, everyone keep an eye out for all of it keep an eye out for trim season and uh, have a great day thank you thank you so much this is awesome